it's time for you to unwind Cause tonight we gonna have a ball, y'all From all over the world, we are bringing you the funniest new comics in Los Angeles Welcome to Love After Dark Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet and make some noise for your host, Luke Ashley! I lost weight for y'all. It's tired and I'm, it's hot and I'm, it's hard trying to be skinny and do skinny moves. Seriously, skinny girls have different dance moves than big girls. Did you know that? You looking at me like, I wanna see. Okay, I'll show you. <laughs> big girls have moves that are big. It's like, like big. <laughs> big girl moves. Skinny girls just drink and just go. That's it. But if I keep losing weight and I'm still doing big girl moves, somebody's gonna be like, um, she just lost weight. <laughs> like, those moves are still kinda new to her. She doesn't know what she's doing. How y'all doing tonight? Y'all doing good? That's what's up. Coming up next is Granison Crawford and Irina Voronina. Laugh After Dark will be right back. Welcome back to Laugh After Dark. Make some noise for Grandison Crawford. You guys living your lives? Yeah. Freaking love that about you. I do. I love saying stuff like that too. Stuff that sounds real positive but doesn't mean anything. Like, I walk past people all the time. I'm like, keep doing what you're doing, man. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> or when you first meet somebody, you're like, what part of town do you live in? Hollywood. Oh, you're right there. <laughs> I guess I am. My favorite is when people don't want to commit to coming to my shows, because I hear stuff like, if I can make it, I'll be there. <laughs> Can't really argue with that. It's just extremely true. Uh, I grew up in Oakland. It uh, has a stereotype of being a rough place. I don't really fit that description. Uh, I'm not rough or a place. Um, <laughs> Uh, my first roommate in L.A. was from Detroit, and he didn't believe me at all. He's like, you from Oakland? I thought people from Oakland were supposed to be hard and stuff. Still don't know what the end stuff is. Like, what? <laughs> Maybe he was a bad eavesdropper, right? Like, the whole... <laughs> like, the whole thing went, people from Oakland is hard, and make excellent poets. Like, I would... I would definitely take it. Because uh, the idea that everybody in Oakland, everybody in Oakland is hard, like, that is ridiculous. The city wouldn't function. <laughs> like, you don't want to walk into a Starbucks and have a hard-ass barista. Just, you want whipped cream or nah? Like, oh, <laughs> just want to live. I'll have my card back. Maybe hold the sass. What's happening? Hard teachers. You walk into a classroom, teachers choking kids out like, shh, it's nap nap time. Like, oh, well, I don't like his methods, but his results are undeniable. <laughs> and also, like, why would I lie about it? It's not like I need street cred at this point. I'm a grown-up. <laughs> I have actual credit. <laughs> I mean, street cred has its place, but Visa <laughs> is everywhere I want to be. <laughs> Growing up in Oakland, I uh, played a lot of dice games. Uh, they were all Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for those that are unfamiliar, that's when nerds get together with dice and slay imaginary dragons. Uh, 
it's a hero sport. Um, <laughs> it wasn't until I got to college that this white dude informed me that that's not a black thing to do. Uh, which is news to me, because in Oakland, those were the only people I played with. I was like, we've been doing it wrong the whole time, guys. The whole time. <laughs> I blew his mind when he found out I grew up playing soccer. He's like, soccer? What kind of black person are you? I was like, I don't know. What kinds are there? I'm gonna need a list before I commit to a box. He's like, oh, I just never heard of any black people playing soccer. And I'm like, oh, so you never heard of the whole world. That's it's a lot of brothers kicking it over there. <laughs> uh, people think that I'm black. I feel like I'm more of a gingerbread brown. You know, try to keep it PC, you know, pigmentally correct. I feel like gingerbread brown would make a great black exploitation character. Because you've heard of Shaft, you've heard of Black Dynamite, but there's a new kid in town, and he's gingerbread brown. Uh, white people uh, always tell me I look like the Key and Peele guy. I like to tell them that that's two people. It's two separate brothers, you know. If, uh, if you don't want to seem racist, I don't mean to sound racist, is a weird way to start. <laughs> it's also not something you need to say before things that aren't racist. <laughs> like you never heard anybody say, I don't mean to sound racist, but your shoe's untied. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse the offense. Race comes up at weird times for me. Uh, like I'll be doing sex and uh, <laughs> as I do, and, um, and sometimes women will be like, ooh, put that big black, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why you gotta make it racial? <laughs> I'm the only other person in the room. <laughs> it's not like I'd be confused if you left that part out. I learned how to do sex by watching porn, uh, which is kind of like learning how to fight by watching the Power Rangers. You're just... <laughs> It's not how they do it in real life. It's not, it's not how it goes down. <laughs> I remember uh, my mom found out that I was watching porn because uh, the next door neighbor used to fix our computers. I think his legal name is Snitchin' Tom. Um, yeah, yeah, I got home, my mom asked me, she said, have you been watching porn? I said, yep, uh, and she left the room. She doesn't like confrontation. Um, I was just super glad that my dad didn't like walk in on me or something. You know what I mean? Because uh, that would have been a weird way to meet him. <laughs> that would have, have been just like, who are you? And do they knock? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm adopted, or as I like to call it, chosen. Uh, although my birth parents were crackheads, so technically, I'm a rescue. <laughs> Ladies, um, <laughs> adults would always ask stuff like, uh, when did you find out? And I was like, when I moved in. <laughs> <laughs> my birth mom was black, my adopted mom was white. There wasn't a whole lot of mystery to it. It's not like I'd been walking around for years and one day just decided to ask like, hey mom, did you change your hair? Like this. <laughs> Something is different. Um, <laughs> or they'd be like, what was it like? I was like, oh, it was like being raised by a different adult. <laughs> Except I got traded up. <laughs> Not because she was white, but because of the whole crack thing we talked about earlier. Come on, guys. Come on. Um, somebody came up to me after a show and was like, hey, you know, you should watch This Is Us because uh, there's kids that are adopted in there. And I was like... <laughs> but I am adopted. 
this is me. Uh, what are you talking about? Um, with kids, adoption was chill, right? Like, it didn't come up a lot at recess. If a kid walked up and was like, hey, want to play tag? I'm adopted, would be a weird opener. Like, it would be odd for people. Um, played tag with my birth dad once. Been it for years. Uh, just <laughs> pop pops playing the long game, you know what I mean? Some of us in the corner, what's up? It's a dark corner. <laughs> um, technology's changing things. Look what Facebook did to friendship. Ruined that whole thing, right? Because when I was a kid, if I would have said I had a thousand friends, one of my friends would have been like, you lying, we all here. <laughs> it was usually Rob, uh, he was cool about that. But on the other hand, it helps us reach hundreds of people a day. Do you know how many pigeons that would have taken back in the day? Right, you step into your pigeonarium, just having a comedy show with would love it if you could come with. When if do you go up if? I never know in advance if when I'm going up if. If I can make it, I'll be there. Damn it! I'm Grandison Crawford, y'all. Thank you. You know we got more laughs coming up, so stay tuned. Laugh After Dark will be right back. Welcome back. Give it up for Irina Voronina. I'm from Russia. You know, the country that brought you vodka. And caviar. And even your current president. You welcome, you welcome. People think that Russians are cold, angry, and unemotional. And I think that's just the way our language sounds. Let's say if I said, Я хочу быть ваш, и всю вашу семью. Right? It sounds like I just said, I want to kill your entire family. <laughs> and that's just because that's what I said. <laughs> People want to know all kinds of details about my life back in Russia. Like, um, do Russian people call Russian dressing American dressing? <laughs> No, we call it disgusting. <laughs> uh, growing up, what did you do on Christmas Day? We did what we did every day. Cry. <laughs> because we were in Russia. <laughs> Russian concept of being poor and American concept of being poor are very different. Like my friend Stacy was telling me, Oh my God, Irina, on my 10th birthday, I cried so much because my family couldn't afford a pony. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> on my 10th birthday, I cried so much because we had to eat the pony. <laughs> American parenting is also very different. You know, it amazes me how much you guys here like to baby your children. I swear, every time I have a comedy show, I get this one call, oh my God, we can't make it tonight because we don't have a sitter. <laughs> a sitter? <laughs> Joey's 15. <laughs> in Russia, Joey would be a colonel in the army. <laughs> you know, in Russia, an average six-year-old knows how to take a bus and knows how to light a gas stove. And as a result of this early independence, Russia is a number one country in child geniuses and also house fires. <laughs> and we're equally proud. <laughs> I feel bad for American teenagers. It blows my mind. It's seriously how busy their parents keep them. I mean, poor kids. They have to go to school, they come home, and they have soccer practice, piano lessons, goat yoga. <laughs> and 
Russia, we don't have any of this stuff. In Russia, we go to school, we come home, and maybe if we finish our homework, only then are we allowed to hack your presidential elections. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I came to the United States a few years back to work as a model. And on my very first photo shoot, the photographer goes, Hey, Irina, do you think you would be comfortable posing for Playboy? And I was like, uh, you mean uh, fully naked? Hell no, that's just insulting. It pays $25,000. I meant to say inspiring. My English not so good. Would you like a, a full Brazilian or a bald eagle? <laughs> and um, thank you, thank you. This is how I became Playboy's Miss January 2001. <laughs> Thanks. But I don't really like to talk about it. I mean, who cares? 2001, that was like ages ago, right? Like, I'm not even gonna mention that uh, signed copies are still available on eBay. <laughs> or that I was on the page 49. Also, 50, 51, 52, 53. <laughs> but I think posing for Playboy was only natural because back in communist Russia, we had absolutely nothing to wear. You guys call it Playboy, we call it Wednesday. After you pose for a magazine, everyone assumes that you slept with half, which is very hurtful because he never asked. <laughs> for many years, I felt like I was the only bunny who wasn't allowed to play in a carrot patch, <laughs> even though everyone had to share the same old carrot. Dating also became super hard. Like some people, they won't even date me because I wasn't Playboy. And other people, like they would only want to date me because I wasn't Playboy. But curiously so, all men would still want to fuck me. <laughs> it's a proven fact. Uh, <laughs> Playboy was a lot of fun, you guys. I was going through my old Playboy party pictures the other day and I found a photo of myself and Bill Cosby. <laughs> I know, because honestly, I don't even remember ever meeting him. <laughs> well, you know, dating is hard for everyone. And I think for women, finding a partner, finding a husband, is a lot like electing a president, but for your vagina. <laughs> because ladies, we can't just let like whoever walk into the ovarian office, right? He has to meet certain criteria. Like for me, to be a United States born citizen. over the age of 35. And if he campaigns, he better campaign really hard. <laughs> and he cannot have a beard because I spent $950 in landscaping the Rose Garden. <laughs> and I'm not going to put another bush back in the office. the White House, you guys. People always wonder if Russians like Trump. And the answer is no, because actually, we never got a thank you for everything he did for us during the elections. Like, not a shout out on Twitter, not a like on Facebook. The only thing we got in return was sanctions. And that's after he was peed on by some of the finest Russian women. <laughs> That's just ungrateful in my book. <laughs> I'm an actress, and like most serious actresses today, I have to laugh, I have to cry, I have to show my tits. <laughs> you can see them um, 
I mean us, <laughs> now on an episode of 13 Reasons Why on Netflix. And I'm actually a big fan of the show, so I was promoting a hell out of it on social media, and I got a very angry tweet from a mother of 12-year-old. And she goes, I can't believe there is nudity on this show. Don't you people understand that 12-year-olds are watching? And I'm like, oh, well, I am very sorry that little Mikey was emotionally scarred by seeing my nipple on a show about teenage suicide? <laughs> More like 13 reasons why you're a shitty parent. <laughs> and if you think that was a coming of age moment, just wait till he Googles me. We'll be right back after this. Show. Give it up for all the comics you saw tonight. Thanks for watching. Laugh at the